Hi all, Mark here. Uh, today I'm going to be playing Firmament. Uh, this is actually the second time I'm going to be playing in Firmament. Uh, from Cyan Worlds. Loki. So we're going to start a new one. I got this near the end of last winter, pretty much, and uh, it was exciting to get into it. But it's been a while, and I'm looking forward to get back through this. So, here we are. Finally, your first breath, and I have taken my last. But uh, who cares, right? Uh, there's so much to be done. I'm dead, but you have so much to learn. <laughs> I once woke up just as you have. A blank mind, a clean canvas. Confused, yes, but I will teach you just as I was taught. And so, first lesson, you are a keeper. I was a keeper. We were all keepers. Second lesson. I will lie to you. I learned much later that this is the way to keep the rounds. And third lesson. This machine is your adjunct, your tool to learn and to keep the rounds. Take it and we will begin. The firmament, it is remarkable that we are here. And later on, you'll get to see what she's talking about there. But for now, we're just beginning our adventure into the world of firmament. And this is where we woke up, obviously. Looks kind of comfortable for a coffin, I guess. So, the first thing you notice is all like the little details of everything, how much work they put into just. And you want to look at the books closer, but a whole thing about that I learned about this game is there isn't a whole lot of interactive things, unfortunately. And I even was in communication with some people that had the virtual, like the virtual reality version, and you still can't really interact with stuff, which is a little disappointing with how much time they spent in it. But still, it's stuff that's pretty interesting to look at and think about what it's meant for. A lot of scientific looking things. And here's another thing, a book that you can't really open, but it says something, surgery and transplantation, first aid kit. And then what we have over here, a couple lockers that you can't open. <laughs> oh, and here's a book. The first interactive looking thing. The personal maintenance adjunct. Which we are wearing. Introduction. As a newly awakened keeper of the firmament mission, you have been assigned a personal maintenance adjunct which can be informally referred to as the adjunct. The adjunct is a miracle of modern mechanics and electronics, augmenting the keeper's abilities in marvelous ways. Your tasks while keeping 
would normally require keys, tools, extreme strength to both access and control the various aspects of the realm. The adjunct serves as both a key and a tool and amplifies your abilities. It can access approved areas in the realm and it can control the equipment and devices, both large and small, that you will use regularly. Sockets, your adjunct has, is designed to interfere, interface with the socket, a receiving component which the adjunct can attach to. Given the keeper access to the control, the sockets are ubiquitous in the realm, and although they may appear physically similar in each other, they provide vastly diverse abilities. An adjunct can be propelled to a socket both close and far, providing for control from a distance. A communication leash or tether provided for constant control and feedback while your adjunct is socketed. In the operation, to operate the adjunct first place, the adjunct gauntlet on your hand, you can then direct the pr and propel the forward element at the desired socket. With the forward element firmly socketed, you can activate and control the equipment. The specific aspect of the equipment are viewed by the keeper through the view veil on the gauntlet. Twisting the gauntlet left or right will activate the specific controls available, and some sockets and equipment have more than a single method of operation, and you can switch to these additional modes to control them as well. Augmentations starting adjuncts have only basic abilities, but the keepers advance in their training, the adjunct can be augmented with additional capabilities. These augmentations will be provided in the arch as part of the advancement ceremony. Amplified force, adjunct can apply greater force and torque or torque distance extension. Adjuncts can be propelled to double the distance, concentrated socketing. Adjuncts can chain from one socket to another socket. Display. The adjunct will supply a display when the socket is with the specific information about the functionality of the socket. The upgrade status is also available at any time on this display. Conclusion. Please respect your assigned adjunct. Use it cautiously so as not to harm yourself or others. F future augmentations may provide for additional abilities. Your mentor can answer any other questions you may have. Keep the realm for all. And that's basically it. So let's get our exploration going here. You walk into this, you wake up in this weird looking room full of machines. It kind of reminds you maybe of the Matrix a little bit. You're kind of wondering what's going on. And this lady comes out of some kind of artificial intelligence to explain something to you. And now you're heading up the stairs wondering what's going on and why you're here. I don't know if you have amnesia, but it seems like it. And where's that adjunct? Here it is. So, we're gonna open it. And there we have it. We opened our first door. Now we're in this interesting looking room. Looks more like a bedroom. Well, actually without a bed. Some kind of a relaxation room. What have we got here? Some more scientific devices. A guitar.
It's a shelf full of random things like books. General surgery, human anatomy, it's a lot to do with human body and medical stuff, I guess. We understand. Get this random thing. Oh, there's a train coming by in real life. That's not in the game, everybody. I live near a train track. It's just something I deal with on a daily basis and it doesn't really bother me anymore. I could sleep through this train. Anyway, we should continue on our adventure. Here. Now, what is this? Looks like a garage or something. Well, not. And we have another one of these up here. Oh. It's... An elevator. Oh, uh, this place looks very cold. I hope I'm wearing something it's very beautiful. warm. beautiful. Don't. Hmm. The majesty and peace of the ice and stone. I didn't emerge from the threshold here as you did. I awoke at this one. My first journey to this realm. Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. You know, when I was first hearing about this game and watching it and everything, I figured we were going to have this like adjunct that was like a little orb thing that would follow you around all the time. And that was kind of what I was getting excited for. But I mean, this is what you have here. It's like a handheld tool device. This one I specifically made with a mist theme. Uh, they have different ways you can make it look through the options menu. This is like a mist looking theme, I guess. And you can options to change the color, the lights and everything. But anyway, we can bring this thing back down. Or Go. Watch it go back down. So, very interesting. This like a frozen waterfall. Expansive snowy landscape with mountains everywhere. Oh. I don't really want to open the menu right now. But we're gonna... What do we have here? You have small stinging. Oh no. It's normal. And your hearing, ah, uh, maybe only the alarms, or your own heartbeat. Now, these effects will cease in time, as your body becomes accustomed to the heat. Look we'll at that. these problems when we emerge from the threshold. You will live, and that is a good thing. But honestly, this is one thing I like about firmament. It's just like being able to look off into the distance and see how like the detail off far, far away and everything and looking down the cliff here. I know in real life that would be quite a scary thing, but.
What was I about to say about this? Um, I forget what I was gonna say. Maybe it'll come back to me. So we're just looking around. And you always get that radio intercom thing. Oh, you know what I was going to say is that she's the mentor. I'm pretty sure... Uh, yeah. She, she's known as the mentor. I hope I'm not making anybody dizzy, but I just really like enjoying... Like, what is that? The first mysterious thing you see when you look up is like, what is that? Is that supposed to be like a launch pad or something? That's the first thing I would think it is, but you don't really know. And then things just catch the corner of your eye the more you walk through the environment. And this flag, like what does this flag mean? It's interesting. It, it has the firmament thing at the top. I think I wonder if these are probably pretty warm actually. They probably radiate heat, I wouldn't be surprised. The adjunct is making sense to you? If not, no worries. It will soon be as natural as your hand. Keep trying. <laughs> and this one-sided prose is strange, is it not? <laughs> I feel like a performer, <laughs> but this is where we are. I like that accent, to be honest. It's very relaxing. I had a most wonderful mentor. She taught me all these realms. I will teach you. But then, Tilna arrived also. And, well, he first taught me beyond these realms. I will teach you that as well. So here we have a big pit down here with these ice looking blocks and this empty chasm here wouldn't have no way of crossing and then we have this robotic looking arm with some kind of tower looking thing over here and that weird looking launch pad thing whatever it is I don't think you really find out what those things actually are for until like like near the end of the game pretty much. You see, I mean like I, I even forget what they did. It's been a f like a few months now and I already forget. But, oh. I'll climb up the ladder first I guess. Look at those beautiful lighting effects. Sun flare. All right, so. So, this realm is the source of our water. And you will learn what must be done by doing all that we do. And I will help, but I will not hold your hand. It's better to learn by contemplating, failing, hopefully understanding. We thought we understood. So, there we are. Okay, so lowering now. And see on the right that little diagram showing the lift control? Doesn't, not sure. Oh, I grabbed something. There we go. And it's coming back up. 
that wasn't too tricky. So, let's see here. No. We want to move it back, I think. Uh, let me get a better perspective here. Uh, best perspective, I guess, would be right around here. Uh, right there. That might be oh, back a little bit. Right there, maybe. Now we're going to lower it. A little bit more. Right about there, maybe. I think that might have did the trick. Let's go check it out. So what do we got over here? Another bridge thing we got to raise. Okay, so that's one thing. Oh, but doesn't look like we're going to be able to get to the other side yet. Hmm. And from here we can actually see, I think it looks like it's pretty... Oh no, it's got to be moved forward a little bit more. Not quite. Uh, or backward, rather. Right about there, I'd say. That looks like it's pretty lined up, you think? Alright, let's go. So this is usually how most of the puzzle scenarios go, well, I mean, they're all different, but you have to use the environment to get from one place to another, basically. So a lot of machinery interaction and stuff like that. And look right up there, you can see that that's actually attached to some kind of train. Oh, so we crossed over. So I don't have a whole lot of minutes left on my recording for this episode, but I just want to take a look up this way before we run out of time too much. Right now I'm doing half hour, but maybe I'll do longer than half hour in the future, like an hour long or something. But half hour is manageable. So, there we go, we've connected the bridge. More ease of access through the environment. pretty cool. I just love it. Like, you can, like, just be staring off into the distance and you can see, like, the mist moving. The clouds don't move too much, but it kind of has the illusion of movement, I guess. Oh, Isn't it breathtaking? The arches of the firmaments, so inspiring and uh, reassuring. <laughs> and this, 
uh, this pad will convey you to this one where I want to live with my comrades. Go when you like, you can return here. Well, I think that would be a good way to end uh, this episode as we're going to head off into that area. But first, we'll take a look around here. We are Interesting looking building off in the distance there. Ooh, the sun. This is like... It's like... I just love how they design this. It's so beautiful. So, actually, yeah, like I said, we're going to go off to the um, swan that she was talking about. So here we go. No, that didn't seem to do anything. Let me try that again. There we go. Maybe it was a little frozen or rusty or something. Okay, here we go. You will not be able to leave Mr. Wonder of the other realms, but you will transit to the swan first. Okay, here we are. Welcome to the swan, where we gathered, talked, Sang, learned, eat, laughed, shared my memories of this place. So vivid, so wonderful, so peaceful, till it was shattered. The lies are controlling, but so when I first saw this place last time I played, it was like breathtaking. I just kind of was like standing there, just like looking at this place in like one area, just looking at the ceiling and everything like, wow, what is this? Like a steampunk masterpiece. And then you look around and you see that they have these different pods here. And eventually I'm going to go around and explore these other places. We got Julston. And I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Curieville. And St. Andrew. <laughs> <laughs>